Christ threshes. You know, he's the harvester. He's the one that brings the family in. He's the one that, when it was just four months to the harvest and there weren't very many workers, hey, he can cut it all himself if he has to. But he does have servants that are can-do type people. And he expects them to do their part. Because there is so much anxiety in the world, you know, a lot of us have been blessed that we've been able to have a chance at one time or the other in combat to protect this nation. We don't shake up easy. But I've seen people really get shook this past uh, month of, of uh, simply at a little bit of news of people that don't know what's going on trying to act like they do, you know. Don't, don't ever, you know, our counterintelligence, our CIA, our FBI, there is no way they're going to talk to the press and tell them what's really happening. You know that, don't you? The press just makes up stuff as they go, all right? And unfortunately, at times, that scares the living daylights out of people when they bring their little colored picture forward. We are a can-do nation. We're a nation blessed by God. God takes care of this nation. Why? Because this nation's constitution comes from the very Holy Bible itself. Though we have a lot of um, bad people or unbelievers in this nation, we've still got a lot of believers and that's all it takes to keep it on the straight and narrow. And it's going to stay that way. Why? How can I say that? It's God's promise. And that's why I wanted to talk today about thrashing and to give comfort for the fact that even though Christ roughs some people up, he takes care of his own. And hopefully you're one of his own. And if not, it's time to get that way because the thrashing is about to begin. Okay, Turn your Bibles, open up if you would to Isaiah, Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 41, this is a chapter of comfort for those that believe, those that follow, those that love our Heavenly Father. Isaiah chapter 41, and it reads, verse 1, Keep silent before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near... Let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. This is God's calling to the world. And if you don't know what to say, keep your mouth shut and listen to him. Okay. Otherwise, come together for what? Judgment. What's happening? What is truly happening? Speak with discretion, with wisdom and knowledge and of that that is obviously happening. And dis judge it with discernment. Well, we're not supposed to judge. You're supposed to discern what is going on in the world and how you should live therein. Okay, that's what he's saying. Listen to him and you'll never go wrong. Verse 2. Who, who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword and as driven stubble to his bow. You know who it's talking about? It's talking about Cyrus. He wasn't, he wasn't even an Israelite. God named him before he was born. He raised him up to conquer the world, basically, so that he could free the... Um, Israelite children to go back and rebuild Jerusalem. What does that mean? That means God will use whomever he so chooses, but he's in charge and he gets it done. Which means what? You don't have anything to worry about. God's in control. He sees to it. When Israel was in trouble and couldn't help herself, and she was... Uh, in bondage, he raised up Cyrus, named him before he was born, made him a king of kings, and I mean conquered enough that he, and then gave him a heart that had compassion on good people, and he not only turned them loose to rebuild Jerusalem, but he picked up the tab for it. 
talking about Cyrus. So what did they really have to worry about other than serving God? Nothing. And what's the difference? But what he's saying is, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to see that it's all right, but there are conditions. You have to believe. You have to trust. And you have to know. Verse 3. He pursued them and passed safely even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Safely means peacefully. I mean, he did a lot of the conquering without even lifting the sword. Why? Well, it was God's will. Verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it? calling the generations from the beginning. Who directed this? Who directed everything? I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am He. You know, it amazes me when Christians get spooked. It's against your belief. It's against, it's against what you believe to be anxious about things. You have to know that God's in control. That things are happening. And all you have to do is be forewarned. And to be forewarned is forearmed. And how do you forewarn yourself? From the Word of God. God takes care of His own. Get your little old heart to settle down. Get your little old heart not to be anxious when, when uh, wimps start crying out in the press that the sky is falling. It's not. I've read the back of the book. I know what's going to happen. Okay. And the sky is not going to fall. And we're not going to be defeated. Verse 5. The isle saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. Draw near and come. And those that are against God have a right to have a little fear. 6. They helped everyone his neighbor. And everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. This is concerned. This was really back when Cyrus was going good. Hey, he took care of everybody. He was a man forenamed of God and used of God. Seven. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, "It is ready for the soldering." And he fastened it with nails that it uh, should not be moved. Uh, they begin to build their own little religions. That's what people do. Well, what denomination are you? Well, I don't know. What, what denomination are you? Well, I'd just like to have a talk with you. Well, have you ever thought about being a denomination that studies God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse to see what saith the Lord? Okay. Uh, people like to be religious, especially if it comes to passing the hat. Preachers especially. Verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, the twelve natural tribes. 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. I will not cast thee away. Now, you know, a lot of people are kind of, they say, I wonder where that people is. Well, tell me what nation is it that every community is overrun with little churches? What nation is it that when you reach in your pocket and you pick out a coin, if you had one, it would say, in God we trust. Okay. And we do, don't we? You should. Your heart should be strong on Him. You shouldn't be worried about anything. Anxious a little bit? Hey, always fitting to be a little anxious before the fight. It'll cause you to put the gray matter in gear and win. Okay? But never be a wimp. Why? Because God's promises are, I will take care of you. I've chosen you. You follow me. But he put a little qualification on that that a lot of people said, you're my servant. Uh, well, what does that mean? Well, what does a servant do? A servant serves. That means work. W-O-R. 
R K. Why well, you're about to lose me, brother? <laughs> I don't go for that work business too much. Well, then you're in trouble. When you're a servant of His, you believe upon Him and you worship Him in as much as you live a normal life. You don't become a religious fanatic, but you love Him and you set a good example and protect your credibility in your community so that people can look at you and say, there goes a Christian. I mean, I saw him down at the pub the other night, but he's still a Christian. Well, you know, maybe he had business at the pub. Don't judge him, all right? Unless he comes out of there, unless they have to carry him out of there. <laughs> then, then you might wonder about that a little bit. Oh, anyway, set, a credi set your credibility, keep your credibility whereby you set an example for Almighty God because he's going to use you. You are his servant. Get your mindset to it. But I, I, I want to be uppity. I want to be somebody. Well, let me tell you something. God is somebody. Christ is somebody. Isaiah was really somebody. Those old boys really served God. We're just followers. See that we do that. All right? And keep ourselves humble before Almighty God. Verse 10. Fear thou not. You don't have to let your heart go pitter-patter. But they might blow us up. Well, let them try it. Come on down. For I am with thee. That's why you don't have to worry. Do you understand that's a promise from God? I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the, with the right hand of my righteousness. What have you got to worry about, my friend? What, don't let people spook you. We have a God, a Father, that takes care of His own and is quite capable of doing it. No ifs, no ands, and no maybes. Behold, or you look here, all they that were incensed against thee, that's your little old enemies, shall be ashamed and confounded, they shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. You don't have to worry about it. God takes care of business. Let me ask you a question. One whole generation died in the wilderness because they were afraid of the giants. Just, just oh, I mean, you know, right there at Barney, oh, Kadesh, just, we can't go another step. There's giants over there. How many giants did they run across when they finally went over there? Zippo, nada. God had already taken them out. He, took, he takes care of business, okay? So people get all smothered down over nothing, okay? Don't let the wimps confuse you. God is with us. He protects us. And I, I know it's a sad thing that we lose good men and women in combat. But you know what is, is uh, uh, they're heroes. We, we have lost somewhere, can somebody say about 400, is that right? It's about 400 and we conquered a nation. Do you know how many have died in the streets of San Francisco since that time? Thousands. Thousands. Those were heroes. They were serving God and country. And don't ever, don't ever let some bunch of wimps tell you otherwise. God takes care of his own. We have had more people, we've lost more people to drunken drivers that would make that figure um, shameful. All right, how, how many lost to drunken drivers since, since over that same period of time? We don't have anything to fear, and those that come against us are not going to make it. Verse 12, Thou shalt seek them, and shall not find them. Your enemies are not going to be there, even them that contend with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, 
and as a thing of naught. For I, how come? For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And he will, all the way. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Translate the word worm, weakness. Fear not your weakness, Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Now, do you believe or not? Are you a believer or are you not a believer? If you're a believer, you got to know that's his promise. And he will protect us. He will take care of us. Well, I've wondered why we was winning all the war. Well, there you got it. He sees to it. Plus, we're good. All right, And I don't say that braggingly. We just are. Why? Because he leads us and directs us, trains us, prepares us, and most of all is with us. 15. Behold, this is God's promise to you. You listen sharp, uh, listen closely. This is why we came here. Behold, I will make thee a new sh sharp threshing instrument having teeth. It's going to have a mouth. This word threshing is marat in the Hebrew, and it means to grind to powder. It means to, to um, motate, move, shake. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, that's the nations, and beat. This word beat is dakwa in the Hebrew tongue. And it means literally to beat to dust. Right? Do you know why? To separate the good from the bad. You got it? It's in a good way. Beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Why? For the, the, um, the um, analogy is for threshing. You know what the winnow? You, you pulverize, you, you pick the black-eyed peas, okay, after they're nice and dry. And you put them in a gunny sack or a toe sack. It's according to what part of the country you're from, all right? And you take a big stick, a sledge, and you beat them like this. And when they're dry and crisp, those holes kind of shell up and the peas drop down in that sack. And then you have someone hold that sack and gently empty it out. And you either have a good windy day. That's not hard to find in Texas or Oklahoma. And you kind of pour them out and have a blanket down below, and the hulls blow away, and the peas, y'all like black-eyed peas? All right, well, it's New Year, you better, all right? Just pat. The peas drop down on the blanket, and you put them in a bag and store them, all right? Well, it's just, what was the good? The peas. Man, they're good, okay? The chaff. It went by the wind. The wind is symbolic of the Spirit, and God's Holy Spirit can sure get rid of bad stuff. Okay? Stuff you don't need. And you're worried? What are you worried about? He's a thresher. He's the, he's the machine that God... Well, I, I probably shouldn't say that, but you understand what I'm saying. That God promised us a real good threshing machine. That He sent us he said, I'm going to give you one that can flat get it done. And of course he's talking about, many of you will have a little star there, and that means we're talking about Messiah, Jesus Christ. We're talking about the Lord and Savior of the land. He is our thrashing machine, and he has a mouth, and out of that mouth comes the mighty word of truth uh, that causes Satan to be amount to nothing, not a. He is our thrashing machine. He can shake. Verse 16. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind, the spirit, shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. You know, we've got it made, my friends. All you have to do is believe and know. Don't ever be afraid. You know, and, and because what? We don't have anything to be afraid of. You're a part of the team. And whatever happens to you, make sure that you do what it is that God intended you to so that you get it done. 
Okay? You're it. Okay? Verse 17. When the poor and needy seek water. I want you to see the tenderness of this thrash here. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I do not understand in my heart how anyone could doubt our Father or how anyone could be afraid. I do not understand it. That's why you can be of such good courage. That's why you can be so up. It's that you know God himself loves you. Knows what you're thinking even. And protects you when you are his servant. He takes care of his own. He takes care of business. He loves his children. And his children are very important to him. But just who am I? You're a child of God. Act like it. Uh, and he will see you through. He will take care of you. Well, he gets a little rough around the edges. Just right. All right. Just right to make it very clear. Don't mess with God's children. All right? That's what is very important. And do you know something? It has never paid from the beginning of time for anyone to mess with God's children. Ultimately, the enemies of God's children are as nothing. And touch not his anointed or God will crush you. He is so good to us. He promises us. And boy, he is a harvester. Do you understand harvester in connection with threshing? He knows how to bring the good crop in, the good seed. You're looking at a bunch of them right here that God can use because they are servants of the living God and God takes care of his own. Okay. Now, I, I don't think there could ever be a chapter in God's word that would be more comforting during a time of crisis. If you really want to call it a crisis, you know... Um, there is, when there is a time of testing, that's when God's champions shine. Okay? That's when the ones that really love God say, you can count on me. I, just put, me, put my name in the hat, Father. I'm ready. All right? And don't ask for something you don't want either because you might get more than you um, bargain for if you don't really mean it. Okay, let's go to the Minor Prophets, the um, book of Amos. Right after Hosea, Joel, should come little old Amos. And I want to go to the ninth chapter of the great book of Min in the Minor Prophets. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos. Christ is a thresher. He always separates the good from the bad. Do you know what's good about that for you? If you raise your family good, God's going to see to it that the bad get moved. That's what, that's what um, sifting means. I mean, just picture, if you would, a lot of you, how many of you ladies have ever used an old sifter? I guess they still do, don't they? Everybody uses... I always, when I make biscuits, I sift my flour two times because I want them to float. <laughs> they do. My old bachelor uncle taught me how to make biscuits. Mwah. Ooh, I can, I'll tell you what, I'll put them up. I will. Anyway, back to the subject. Those old sifters, think about, you know, you fluffy duffy the flour... And you put it in there, but you get those little moisture or whatever it is that gets those little round balls of dough and stuff. That, And when they don't go through that sifter, that little wire you're cranking knocks the living daylights out of them. I mean, they get shook around pretty good. So what you want to always do is make sure, as a child of God, that you fit the sieve. Okay? 
Do you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going somewhere where I've never gone before and explaining it. Make sure you go right on through. Okay. That you've got your life right and you're going to go right. That means you're a mighty warrior for him. Okay. You're a servant that he can count on. Right. Because he's going to sift. Amos chapter chapter 9, ver, not, not chapter 9. Yep, it is chapter 9, verse 9. Got two nines there, all right? Amos chapter 9, verse 9, and it reads, For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sheave, Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. I'm going to, if it's a grain that is good, I'm going to protect it. The word sift is N-U-W-A in the Hebrew tongue. And it's pronounced nuah. Okay. Nuah. And, uh, and it means literally to, to rough up, to shake. It means to... Um, to go to and fro, if you would, and and um, and can even mean crush if it must. So, in the harvest, there's a lot goes on there. But what is the purpose? It's to get rid of the bad, and he's going to do it. He's going to get rid of the bad, but not one grain is considered good. All right, you don't want any chaff in there. The grain is good, and it's going to be separated. Verse 10. Who's going to do that? Christ is. Okay. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Those that say, now the false Christ isn't coming. God's word doesn't say that. It does. And he says it over and over and over, giving the warning. And hey, the people that won't believe it, guess who they're going to worship? And it's going to happen in the best of families. So you might as well get set for it. It's coming. And it's not too, it's just a short piece down the road here. Well, how long is a short piece? I don't know. But it's not very far, okay? Verse 11, in that day... Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen? Do you know what is the tabernacle? It's Christ. I'm going to bring him back and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Christ, Christ said, "Tear it down. If I want to, I can rebuild it in three days, and He can do it in one hour if He wants to. Why? It's His body, His many-membered body. You're a part of it." 12, they that, are, that they that may possess the remnant of Edom, that rather they may possess the remnant of Edom. Well, who's that? That's Russia. Okay. Edom is red in the Hebrew tongue. Okay. It's the red nation. And of all the heathen, here's a qualifier, don't forget it, which are called by my name. Well, what does it mean called by my name? Christ man or Christian. He will see that they are saved, that they are sifted, saith the Lord that doeth this. Who's doing it? The Lord is doing it. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. It's going to be plenty of everything, more than you can use. All right, and, um, and, and why? God loves his children. You know, he stocked this old earth pretty good. I mean, it was stocked with some of the best timber. It was stocked with some of the purest water. And look what man has done with it. I agree that if God told us to cultivate it, and that means take care of it, because of the environmentalists, we haven't done too good. They won't let us get in and tend the crops. They want it to burn up. Okay, anyway, that's just throwing that, that's extra, all right? 14. <clears throat> and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. 
I'm going to captivate their hearts. They're going to love me. All of them, every knee will bow. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. Nobody's going to have a short man in between. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. You won't have any taxation to take part of it away. It's all yours. Okay? And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. That hasn't happened, but it's going to. Never again to be moved. Always blessed of God. He so wants to take care of his children, and he reaches out, and they draw back and listen to garbage and fear and anxieties and are frightened by nonsense rather than judging accurately what's happening in this world. You know, um, fear is a very dangerous thing. Fear is catching in communities. One brave person can just stomp it and put a stop to it and cause people to grow up. So See that you set a good example in your community. I want to go now to the New Testament. I want to go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 20. Uh, we want to hear this right from Christ's own mouth, mouth. And as much as the thrasher, the thrashing machine was supposed to have a mouth, let's see what he says. I'm going to take this from Luke because we just covered it in Mark on, on our daily television programs where... Um, where the Lord planted a vineyard and let it out and they kind of messed it up. But he had also, Christ had just run the money changers out of the temple. I mean, he, he put together, as it's written in what, the second chapter of John, he put together about nine strings, leather, pieces of leather on a whip, a cat of nine tails. And he went in and he cleaned house. And he threw over the money t uh, tables and put them out of our father's house where it was is the house of prayer it's where money doesn't buy prayer okay God answers prayer and uh, and he cleaned house and they came in they went what authority did you go in there and do that you know that's something people are always going to ask you in this world when you plant seeds you're they're going to say by what authority you know and you know, I've got a few DDs and this, that, and the other, but a lot of them have DDTs and BSs after their name, okay? <laughs> so you want to be careful. You know. what, what is your authority? Is your ability. If you can cut it, if you can get it done, that's your authority. That people listen and know that it's from God can-do type people. That's authority. Anyway, they just ask him that. Listen to what he says in verse uh, 17. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? You know, he always does this. Have you ever read the Bible? Might answer some of your questions here, friends. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. And you know what we're talking about. We're talking about the chief cornerstone. Who was that? It was Christ himself. It's from the 118th Psalm. It's the psalm that we sing every Passover, every word of it. Uh, at any Passover of the old time, before people had the manuscripts to read for themselves. 18, listen carefully. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now, what is this word grind? Uh, don't get all excited now. It's this, it means to thresh, okay, to winnow. It means, um, the, the word in the Greek is um, lakamaha. And, uh, and it means 
to winnow, that's to thrash, to pulverize, to grind to powder. For what? For threshing. In other words, the chief cornerstone, if it falls on our enemy, it's according to when it's ground up and put in shape to be winnowed. Do you understand winnow? That's where the, the wind is put through it to separate the good from the bad. If it's all bad, there's nothing there to thrash. It's gone. And those that do not accept the chief cornerstone, I truly believe that is why that the capstone on the pyramid is missing. It's symbolic. The fact that Christ is not on earth, all right? The capstone is not there. That's the only true capstone there is, is the head of a pyramid, not, not a square building, okay? Do you all know what a cap is? It's the top, okay? Well, what, what stone is at the top? Well, there's on, where there's only one. It's, it's got to be on a pinhead, okay? So, it's a pyramid, in other words. That stone is missing, and a lot of, you know, there's all, Satan utilizes that. And he's, have you heard about that all-seeing eye on the pyramid, the missing stone? You know, Satan always grabs on to garbage and tries to downplay that that is good. For he, and that stone is coming back, and man, is he going to thresh. Man, is he going to grind. And well, I thought we served a God of love. You bet, because he loves you, he's going to take care of your enemies. There's not, they're not going to be any more, beloved. It's a time that, of peace and understanding and safety, without anxieties and without fear. God wants to protect his own children. And he certainly will do it. Let's, let's document that one more time and then we're going somewhere and I'm going to quit. Matthew chapter 21, real quickly. Two short verses simply to second witness what we just read. I could go other places, but I choose Matthew 21 to do it. Matthew 21, I want to go to verse... 41 of Matthew 21, and it reads, They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men. This is when he let the vineyard out again, which is the world, and will um, uh, let out his uh, vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their, in their season. Jesus said unto them, Did you never read the scriptures again? Many times when Christ was answered, asked the question, he said, haven't you read it? You wouldn't have to ask the question if you'd read the word, okay? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God, shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. I want producers. Pull out that coin out of your pocket again. Identify yourself. Think about it. I know a lot of people would like to have you believe otherwise, but this is a blessed nation. God does bless America. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And again, the word grind means to winnow, to thresh. And it also means to grind powder. Okay. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. Wonder what would give them that idea. Okay. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. He always used wisdom. You do the same, all right? And you will always be protected. In closing, I want you to go to Daniel 2. We're going to have a little prophecy here. That's why we covered this whole thing. King of Babylon. 
It wasn't long ago till the type that is the king of Babylon, which was a dictator of Babylon, he come crawling up out of that pit and it was like it would read in Isaiah 14, is this the man that made the whole world to fear? This creep with the shaggy hair like an eagle? You know, well, think about that. But now we go to chapter two of the great book of Daniel. And we're going to cover, beginning with verse 31, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had concerning the vision of the golden head, the, the, the being. All right, let's cover it. Verse 31, chapter 2, in conclusion. Thou, O king, this is Daniel talking to Nebuchadnezzar, thou, the king of Babylon, that's what's important. It has to do with the end times. Thou, O king, sawest and beheld the great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. I mean, nothing could touch it. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast of, and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, 33, his legs of iron, his feet um, part of iron and part of clay. Now, you know those two won't mix, so we got brittle foundation here, got it? Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. Now stop and think, right there, hold it. A stone cut out without hands, how could that be? God cut it. We're talking about the chief cornerstone. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about the thresher. We're talking about the one that's in control, the same one that brought the man up out of the hole when it was time with his fuzzy head, or whatever you want to call it. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, meaning man didn't have a blasted thing to do with it, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. In other words, Christ brings down the false systems. And you better never doubt that. Well, it seems to me like there was some strange events went with how this type played out uh, there with, um, with the so-called dictator of Babylon. You see, Babylon lays 57 miles south on the Tigris River from Baghdad. And the cruel leader that rebuilt Babylon is the one that came out of the hole who was out of commission from the time his statue was pulled down in Baghdad, seven moons, seven times passed over him, just as it's written in this same book of Daniel. Seven times, like the living like um, animals. And he was, when he come up out of there, they looked for nits in his hair and... Uh, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. Is this the man that deceived the world? Who brought him down? Don't you ever forget it. It was Christ. It was our brave servants of God, our troops, our military, that God used to see that this came to pass. But it is Christ that puts them out of commission, ultimately. That was only a type. We've still got the real thing coming. Stand by. Verse 35, this then was the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer thrashing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. What is that stone? That stone is Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, he's in control. You've got nothing to fear but fear itself. See that you mature and take care of your family and, and uh, strengthen them. Strengthen them from who? From our Father Almighty God. Okay? Father loves his children. This threshing floor documents it. He doesn't do it because he gets pleasure from grinding dust. 
but from saving children. Don't ever forget it. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege of serving you, Father. Thank you for the mighty word, Father, of protection in these perilous times that are wonderful times because you're in control. Thank you, Father, in Jesus, yes, you, his precious name.